Hey guys, this is Pliny. Um, in this lesson, I want to talk about how you can take really simple chord progressions and stack the harmony to make it sound more like something you'd hear in modern progressive music. I grew up listening to a lot of metal and punk, and from that you learn a lot of chord progressions that probably sound something like... something like that, but then you decide maybe you want to become a more complicated guitarist. And a lot of people that I talk to think that the way to do that is to go and learn all these new magical chord progressions that exist somewhere outside all of the stuff that was the foundation of why you picked up a guitar. But to me, I think what makes modern progressive music interesting and sort of emotionally valid is when you can hear the background of where the musician's coming from, as well as all the stuff they've picked up throughout learning an instrument or writing music. So I'm going to take an example from my song, Selenium Forest. Here's where the chord progression starts, and it's this. And so that's something that you could turn into an Iron Maiden song, you could turn it into a Keisha, I don't know why I picked Keisha, Justin Bieber, it's a very simple sort of um, diatonic chord structure, which to a lot of people who are trying to write music that sounds complicated or progressive might seem scary, but then there are all these moves that you can make from that to color it in a certain way. So the first thing that guitarists will do is turn it into a power chord because you can't argue with a power chord. So. And so if I was in a punk band or a metal band or something like that, that's probably where I'd end, and then I'd add bass and drums and vocals. But because I want to color this in a more sort of open and a little bit jazzy way, the next choice might be to add the seventh. So that would become... And then from there, you can add a ninth which turns it into... And so from there we've sort of taken what could have been a really simple rock chord progression but turned it into a backdrop for being able to explore some of the more different or complex harmonies even though it's still staying true to sounds that are familiar at the sort of foundation of them. And so now that we've sort of developed the chord progression, uh, the next layer from that is adding little embellishments. Um, and one of my favorite guitarists, and probably the first influence I had with this would be Jimi Hendrix, and I'm sure it's the same for everyone. Um, and in a sort of crude way, the thing that I associate most with Jimi Hendrix playing is that sort of, those little embellishments there. So now if we take our chord progression, we can add things. And so now that we've got this chord progression, obviously it can't loop forever, especially because in the progressive world, everyone has the attention span of about a bar and a half before you want to hear something different. Um, so the next sort of step for me is to take this thing and repeat it once, but then maybe change the last bar or change a couple of the embellishments inside it so that you can take uh, a four bar progression and turn it into an eight bar progression. So an example of that would be... And so I guess that's a 
a very simple look at how you can take four very basic chords that you could have stolen from any of your favorite childhood bands but pushed it in a direction that's closer to uh, the sort of music you or at least I want to be writing in 2017.